This is the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder SV. Is it the better midsize three row SUV option? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today, Carrie and I are at Or Nissan in Shreveport, Louisiana. And as always, check out the link in the description of the video if you want to know more about this model or anything else they have in inventory. Let's dig in and see what we have. A special one for those of you who always say, Tom, don't show us the top trim levels, show us the lower trim levels. The SV is a lower trim level. Let's see what we get for the price here. We'll start here with the headlight housing. And you'll notice that we're going to have LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. Now the turn signals are not LED, just one of those things that we see with some vehicles. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it's what's there. The good thing is that the turn signals work. That means you should use them. And we'll find a black grill. You're gonna have a lot of black here with this particular package on this model. So if you like that, that's a good thing. I do like the fact that you're gonna find the lack of gloss black down here. That's gonna see a lot more potential rock chips and stuff like that coming up off the road. This will not damage as much. It's good that it's plastic because, well, that helps in that respect. It just don't hit anything. Nissan logo right here in the center. And these models do come standard front wheel drive, but if you want all wheel drive, that is available too. And let's talk about tire and wheel size here. Let Kerry give you a good look at that. The width is going to be 255. We're gonna have a 60 series sidewall, and that will be wrapped around the 18 inch wheels. A nice color on the wheel. For those who are not fans of chrome and maybe not fans of gloss black, here's a nice option for you. And while this isn't the top trim level, guess what? You're still going to find turn signal indicators built into your side view mirrors. Now they are manually folding, they are power adjustable, and you do have blind spot monitoring built in right there. And this might be a little bit tricky to show if we can't get enough light on it, but we'll try. There is your remote. Everything being black as far as your buttons go. Hopefully you can see what's there. Yes, you do have a remote start right up there. That's what your remote looks like. A nice, thin, compact remote. Definitely going to get the job done. And you'll have your roof rails up here with the crossbars. That's always going to come in handy if there's something that won't fit inside. Maybe you have a full load of passengers, but you can get, put those passengers to work and make them put it up there and tie it down safely. Well, you're in good shape then. What can you do? That's a really good thing. And we'll finish things off here also with LED lighting for our tail lights. A good clean look back here. The body colored shark fin antenna, also our rear roof spoiler. And for those of you who may not know, that is not just cosmetic. It looks good. It just wouldn't look the same if we chopped everything off before we got to that point and it was just open right there. Yeah, it wouldn't work quite the same. But that also allows air when you're driving down the road to come over the rear window instead of coming right down onto it. So when you're driving around with dirt and debris and whatever's floating through the air, it doesn't wind up on your back window. But you do have that rear window wiper when you need it. We'll also have our Nissan logo right here. The Pathfinder logo is going to be in black with the raised lettering. Obviously, depending on what exterior color you get and the package you get, well, that's going to stand out a little bit differently than what we have here. Not necessarily a bad thing. And this model does tow right at the top of the class as far as the midsize SUVs. Let's compare that to, say, the Honda Pilot. Front wheel drive with the Pilot, 3,500 pounds. Same thing here, 3,500 pounds front wheel drive. But you step up to all wheel drive, you gain 1,000 pounds above the Pilot. This Pathfinder will tow 6,000 pounds. And here under the hood is the dual overhead cam 3.5 liter six cylinder engine. Comparing back to the Honda Pilot, numbers pretty much the same on horsepower and torque. 284 horsepower compared to the 285 for the Pilot, you won't be able to tell a difference. 259 pounds feet of torque, 262 pounds feet of torque on the Pilot. Again, you won't be able to tell much of a difference. It does have a nine speed automatic transmission. Always a good thing for those of you who are anti turbo or CVT or anti turbocharger because you also don't have that here either. How about the MPGs? Let's take a look. So here's what we have 20 miles per gallon city, 27 highway, 23 combined and 4.3 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And as always, 
and try and add some value to our videos to set ourselves apart a little bit from everybody else. If nobody else starts telling you the gas tank size on these videos, that means they're not watching my videos. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing or not. You have capless fuel fill and you will be filling a 19 and a half gallon gas tank. And we gave you the figures on towing. We're going to talk about cargo capacity next, but one thing, and Carrie doesn't have to show it to you, but underneath the rear of the vehicle is the spare tire. So that's always good to know that you have that. Now, this is not a power tailgate on this model. Obviously, that is available. 80.5 cubic feet is your max cargo capacity, and there's a lot of different ways you can set that up. Before we look at that, however, let's take a look here underneath the floor because I like what Nissan has because you have these partitions available and obviously you can leave those in, you can take them out, you could leave one in, whatever you want to do. I think that works really well. So obviously you've got several different things that will come back here. That works well. Also going to have some hooks right here that you can use. There's, let's see if I can get that down. That's a tie down right there. And then we've got the hooks up here if we want to take advantage of those. Now with the rear seats. Here's how this works. First of all, let me show you this. There is the recline, max recline with the seats. I know everybody likes to know about reclining second and third row seats. And there's actually a couple of different settings. You see how I'm just moving that up one notch at a time. So there's actually multiple settings, just like that lazy boy in your living room. It's just in your vehicle instead. So obviously to maximize cargo capacity, we're gonna first let down the headrests. Now don't pull on these to let your seats down. And make sure that when you do let your seats down, there's a Velcro tab right there. Let Carrie give you a quick look at that. All you have to do is make sure that's in there. Now I'm gonna show you why I did that here in just a second. We'll let that seat go down as well. When it comes to getting the seats back in place, with the tab being right there, that's very easy to get to or it could be way up there. And then you have to we reach way in, which for me isn't that hard, but for some people it may be a little bit harder to deal with as far as that goes. And here's what everything looks like maximized. The middle row seats here fold pretty flat. I like that. And obviously you can remove this part if you want to. That's gonna help protect your carpet in here if you're hauling around something that can get that dirty, obviously. But there is quite a bit of room back here Pretty easy to deal with. Now these seats, you'll have to put them back up by using this lever on the side of the seat. Put those back up like that. So you don't have the same ability to just pull on this release right here or this tab, whatever you want to call that. This would be a long way to reach. So probably not a bad thing, but they're not power, but that's okay. You can get the kids to do it for you. Okay, let's see what your second and third row passengers are gonna find. We're gonna start with our door bin here and we'll start with the armrest. I'm gonna let Kerry give you his verdict and see what he thinks about that. Now it's kind of an interesting setup right here. It's, it's good, it's comfortable. The thing that's interesting here, you have your two cup holders in the front and then you have the basic grab handle here that you can use to pull the door shut. However, that's a multitasker because you can also store things in there. So I like that, that's not too bad. The door bin right here, you can definitely put the big bottle of protein powder, the blender bottle in there. Take your friends to the gym. You've got plenty of room to do that. And then they can come and they can recline after their workout and take a nap. You wear them out at the gym and they're all worn out and need their protein and then they can take a nap right afterwards. And being that this is a three row SUV, obviously rear seat leg room is a big thing to consider Obviously, we can move the seats forward. We've got the passenger side seat moved as far forward as it will go. I don't think that's realistic for someone to sit like that, but there are a few different areas where you can stop that, makes it a little bit easier. But something I really like here, I'm gonna let Carrie show you the button on the side of the seat over there on the passenger side. Sometimes people ask if, because most of the time it seems that those of us who review these vehicles always go in from this side. I guess I'm guilty of that too. You can always do that from both sides in pretty much every single vehicle. But what I like here is when you push that button is that the seat gets up and out of the way. I can actually push that up just a little bit further and make it a little bit easier to gain access to the third row of seating. So I'm going to pull this seat all the way back. Now that is way back there. So it's a good thing you have the track to move the seats forward. 
So it doesn't have to be this tight. The kids would be happy back here, I think. That's good. Now there is some head space. I have room above my head. And obviously, if we recline these seats, then my head space improves a little bit. Even though I'm further back, I guess it kind of stays the same because the roof line, but that is more comfortable. If this seat was just a little bit further forward, that would be nice. I would be very comfortable back here. Could take the post-workout nap after taking, drinking that protein powder, all that good stuff. Yes, that's important for those of you who don't know about weightlifting. Over here on the passenger side, because it's closer, there are your cup holders. Not much more to talk about other than that. However, the one thing I really like here is the fact that the air conditioning vents are here. Unlike in the Pilot. In the Pilot, and we're not really doing an, a comparison necessarily, but if you were looking between those two, the Pilot vent is actually down here. Why is it better to have that in this area of the roof? Because the air has less distance to travel. If I was sitting in the upright position, especially here, let's move this back up. The air doesn't have much space at all to travel to my face. The less space it has to travel, the less the temperature changes. When it's coming all the way from down here, it's going to be either warmer or cooler, depending on its setting. By the time it gets to me and gets to my face, a lot of the time we like that blowing on our faces, helping us cool off. That's what we have here. And something else that I have to say is really nice, even though we have cloth seating here, there's nothing wrong with that. On this trim level, that's to be expected. But the pattern that we have here, I really like how that sets things off. It's not typical of what you see in a lot of other vehicles. So I definitely have to give the thumbs up on that to Nissan. And what happens if middle row passengers jump out and forget all about the third row passengers back here? Well, there's a button on the back of the seat right there. We'll let you see that first. And all you have to do, or your rear seat passengers have to do, is push that button, seat gets up and out of the way, you can hop right out. And let's not leave your middle row passengers out. They've got the oh crap handle right here, so if you want to exercise 284 horsepower, you can. And they might have to grab the handle. Oh crap, why are we going so fast? You never know. Some people might freak out at that. Get them in a Tesla Model S Plaid and then see what they do. They might start doing breathing exercises like a certain someone I know does when we do those kind of vehicles. But I'll tell you what, there's something here that really impresses me comparing it to, and I know this is going to sound strange, but a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. What is that? The ability to control the rear air conditioning. You have three zones of climate control here. You have to pay, I don't know if it's a $10,000, I think. To, it's, it's a lot of money to pay to have that added to your Mercedes-Benz S-Class. And here on a lower trim level of the Pathfinder, here it is. You can control fan speed, control temperature, we want to turn that down because it's getting warm today. I don't think I want it on low. And you control direction, all that good stuff. You can turn it on to auto if you want to. It's all here. USB options as well. So you're going to have that. And we'll have some storage options beyond what we've shown you so far with the rear seat pockets. I like the fact that these come out as far as they do. That's a little unusual. Seems to be more than most others out there. They usually come out to about this point. Something you don't really think about until you experience it in another vehicle. And you do have that same setup with your air conditioning vents right here. In fact, I can already feel that a lot easier even on the lowest setting. That's a good thing. And as is typical, we have the fold down armrest. Now, one thing that I would like to see more auto manufacturers do, instead of having this horizontal look here, why not vertical? because here's what happens. You put a bottle or a cup in there and all of a sudden it's not an armrest anymore. I guess you could use it like that. But there are a couple of manufacturers out there that will have them with this vertical design like this. And that way, when there's a bottle or two in there, you can still use the armrest portion. And one more thing before we hop into the front seat. For the person who gets stuck here in the middle seat, depending on your age, you probably remember the days where if you sat there in the middle, you were kind of like this because of the transmission tunnel, and a lot of them were really that high. Look at how flat this floor is. It is completely flat, so nobody is going to be uncomfortable based on where their feet are and having to have kind of that crouched position of the vehicles of old days, and 
there's still some out there that have that, but we're starting to see flatter floors or completely flat floors more often than not. And yes, I'm still sitting in the back seat. One more thing I want to show. That's what happens when you have an observant videographer. But here's the thing. If I was sitting here and the seat was far enough back, well, I could actually have less foot space. Now, for the middle row passenger, that's not going to change because you can't change the position of the center console. I can actually put my feet further up because of the design of this area and how it's kind of arched like that. So there's actually more space underneath there. Just kind of one of those interesting little things that we picked up on. And you know what? After that workout and the post-workout protein shake, if the driver and passenger want to take a nap, they can do that. Look at how flat these seats fold. Now, it takes a little more patience with the driver's seat to move this up because it's power. And while we're waiting for me to get back in position to tell you about this area of the vehicle, what's the sticker price for those who may want to know? $42,150 is what you will pay. That's not terribly bad in this day and age. You do get quite a bit for that price. We'll see what the difference is on the door panel there on the passenger side. Now you're gonna have a little more space. What does Kerry think about that? He's happier with that one than the rear, I think. But you have space there, some interesting trim as far as the different materials and design there. Just interesting. I think that's good. It sets things apart. You're not gonna get in and, and look down there and have one of your passengers say, I forgot what we're riding in. Is this a Pathfinder or a Passport? And you also have the ability to recline the passenger seat right there just so you can see what's there. The driver's seat actually seems to go back just a little bit further than that. I'll tell you what, just those little niceties that you don't always think about. Now, you do have a manually adjustable passenger seat. It is heated. That means the driver's seat is heated, but it's power. That's why it took me a couple of minutes to get from being reclined back into an upright position. And we'll hop on into the interior and take a look at what the passenger is gonna find. Now there is some storage space right there above the glove box. Nice to see that. It would be neat to see, well, we haven't done a higher trim level, so I don't know what might be there in other models, but if there isn't something there, there probably should be, whether it's a wireless charging pad. That's one thing I think we should start seeing in more vehicles is double wireless charging pads in the front and maybe something in the rear as well for the rear seat passengers. All those higher trim levels, of course, there is the gloveless glove box because we're still waiting to find some gloves in there. Today it's just a storage box, but they call it a glove box. And as we work our way up here to the touch screen, this is a seven inch screen. So some people might say that's a little bit on the small side. Tell me what your thoughts are, but it gets the job done. It's very easy to use, but it also has a lot of great technology here. You have your wireless capabilities for pairing your smartphone, and you can go in and make a lot of changes depending on what you need to do. Just to show you what's here, we'll run through some of the features and menus right here. Pretty easy to deal with, pretty easy to figure out. Now, on the SV trim level here, we're gonna have one view, but you do have your rear view camera. For those who are not aware, there is no vehicle you are gonna buy in 2024 or beyond, at least in the United States, that does not come with a backup camera. And we can hit menu right there and go back, depending on what we need to do. You can see some of the one touch buttons. We have a back button right there and you can see what else we have across. Also, controls for the radio. There's your volume control. And if you want to change stations, we're going to be right there. Here's the button to start and stop the engine. Pretty easy to figure out in a conventional location. If you went with the Infiniti QX60, it's actually down here compared to being right there. Just something to get used to, but that's just the way it is in that case. Dual zone climate control, as you can see, and as I mentioned earlier, we have heated seats, three stages for the driver and three stages over here for the passenger. I guess that's kind of like having three stages of nitrous oxide, except it's heat. So maybe it makes you move faster, I don't know. Now, if you did have a wireless charging pad, it would be right here. You will find that on higher trim levels, but we do have connectivity in the way of the 12 volt power outlet, USB options down there. And then we move our way up here and we'll have a little bit of storage in front of these cup holders right here and the shifter. Kind of an interesting, unique look, I would say, but it's not push button. 
like the Pilot. For those of you who don't like push button shifters, that's a good thing. So there's all you have to do is just push this button on the left hand side and then you can go into neutral if you want to, into reverse, whatever you need to do. There's how you park. Go turn on your, or put it into park. And then I think you know what everything is here. You can turn off your auto stop start feature right there or turn it on if you prefer to use that power parking brake. You have your auto hold mode and then we also have driving modes. I'm going to let Carrie go through that because that will come up on the dashboard. And I do think it's a nice touch to have the Pathfinder logo right here. And with the lid for the center console, it's wide enough to definitely use for an armrest, unless you have giant bodybuilding arms, which I'm trying to get there, but we're just not there yet. So I can definitely have plenty of room with my arm right there. Contrast stitching and then space within the center console. Hey, Vehicle Visionary fans and YouTube watchers. Carrie here having fun with Carrie's Driving Lounge, Nissan Pathfinder Edition today. So you've been driving around in Honda Pilots, Toyota 4Runners, and you decided, you know what? I want to try a Pathfinder on my next vehicle. But you have no idea what the driving area looks like. You've come to the right place. Carrie's Driving Lounge here. Let's see what's going on. Driving seat area of a Pathfinder. Right here on the door you have door lock, unlock button, your mirror control, left and right adjustment, your power window controls. You have automatic power windows on all doors um, for this vehicle and the lockout button to lock them out. There's your vent for your air conditioning up, down, left, and right. Feels very sturdy. There's your uh, knob to cut that on and off. Here's your switch for dimming your brightness on your dashboard screen. That's what this one here is for. Here's your button to steering assist. And you have your lever there to um, open the hood. There's dead pedal, gas pedal, brake pedal. And here is your lever for your steering wheel control for up, down, and teles tilt telescoping. On the steering wheel, it is very sporty looking, multi-spoke steering wheel, and you have columns on the left and the right. You'll get to those on your left stock of your uh, your steering wheel spoke. You have your radio control, volume up and down, your wheel for menu controls for you push it to activate things, your menu button for back and forward, your channel control button for stations for it backward, a menu button right there. Just airbag. Cover is very, very plastic. You know, it is what it is. The horn's in there also. And you have your cruise control on the right column of the steering wheel. Activate it, reset it, set it, cancel it. Your telephone uh, activation button. You have your button here for safety mitigation um, to activate your, let me get that, how that button there works. It's not on right now. Oh, there it is up there. There we go. It shows you your distance of the vehicle in front of you. And then you can control how far away you want to be from the vehicle in front of you. You have on the right stock, you have your wiper controls, your mister, and your rear uh, wiper control. On the left side, you have headlight controls, dim, parking. I don't think we saw fog lights in front of this vehicle. Um, and you have your turn signals also. Left turn signal, it works. Right turn signal, it works. Make sure you use them, folks. There's an indicator there on your dashboard for seat belts on. It has analog gauges, which is very cool. You don't you don't have to worry about a TFT screen going out on you someday. Even though the center part is TFT, but the outside gauges are analog. RPM, 8,000 RPM gauge. You have a coolant temperature gauge down there. You also, on the right side, you have speedometer, 140 miles an hour. I wonder if it'll go that fast. And you have fuel gauge on there. This is unusual. It has a full tank of gas. That's not common when we're checking out vehicles. Your gas tank door indicator shows that your gas tank door is on the driver's side. This vehicle has 392 miles of range on this fuel. It shows that we're in park and this vehicle being brand new 
has nine miles on it. So let's go through this shifter right here that Tom talked about. Feels very good in the hand. There's a button right here on the left that you push to activate it. We're in park right now. Now we're in drive. First gear. Back in drive. There is reverse. So let's go here to the D mode. And we have tow to exit the vehicle. It gives you some instructions. We have sport. Standard, Eco, Snow. And that's how you work those. They don't call it driving mode necessarily. It says D mode. Nowhere in the vehicle does it refer to it as driving mode. Push the P button here to put it back into park. Up top here, we have your light controls for inside the vehicle. Visor with a mirror. A light up there. It's not LED. Does the visor come out? Let's see. Yes, it does. Pretty cool. How much of the window does it cover? Let's see. Covers it all. Pretty good Nissan. And it has the seatbelt adjustment. So depending upon how tall or short you are, the seatbelt won't cut you in the neck. And I think that overall, the steering wheel feels really good in my hand. It's not very thick, but it still feels pretty good. Um, this is a very, very nice vehicle. It is my first time in the Nissan Pathfinder, and I'm very impressed with it when I compare my experience in the Honda. Um, what Honda is that, huh? The Pilot. When I compare my experience in there, I'm much more impressed with this. It feels more solid. It's definitely quieter at idle. Um, in case you're interested in that, go check it out. If there's something else you want us to check out for the driving lounge, please comment and I will give you a first person non experience from it, which kind of gives you the ability to look at it yourself when you haven't seen it before and kind of see how you like it compared to something else. See you next time. All right, here we go on our test drive with the Nissan Pathfinder. Very first time in a Nissan Pathfinder out on the road. So we're going to see how this goes. We're gonna let the traffic clear a little bit. And there's a very specific reason why we're starting right here, because we're about to give it the ultimate test going over these railroad tracks. So let's just listen. That's, that blows away the Honda Pilot. Y'all know I do a lot of Honda videos, but I'm being honest here. If I was in the market for a midsize three row SUV, it would be hard to go with the Pilot over the Pathfinder. I have to admit, I'm very impressed with what we've experienced so far. The ride quality is good. Definitely a very quiet interior out on the road. That's always a plus. Now, it's one thing for me to tell you about that. My microphone definitely picks things up differently than what we hear in person, so it may sound even more quiet to you watching the video than it sounds to us in the vehicle, but it's still very quiet in here. A very pleasant interior, probably the best way I can put it. I like how it's put together. It just has very good build quality. When you start looking over a multitude of vehicles like this that compete with each other, it suddenly starts to jump out at you when you find one that has better build quality than the others. And none of these vehicles are by any means 100% perfect. But for our first time in this model, definitely very impressed and a lower trim level. So there's a lot of things that are not here that we'll get to show you in some upcoming videos as we move forward with higher trim levels. But the thing I like here is that it's very easy to deal with. It gets down the road when you need it to. It's not meant to be a hot rod, but we'll go around this 18 liter in front of us in just a second and be able to show you that we do pretty well. It's not going to be a problem to go around slower moving traffic. Technology is definitely very easy to deal with and easy to learn. I like that fairly minimalistic, but it still has the best features and functionality. And there we go. I'm a little over quarter throttle to easily get around that truck. I'm doing 65 miles per hour right now. Didn't really push all that hard. I read some information where some were saying that the engine in this model is a little sluggish. I really haven't experienced that. 
but it depends on what you're used to driving. If you're reviewing vehicles and maybe you just reviewed a Z06 Corvette, well, that probably isn't going to do you much good when you hop into the Pathfinder right after that. You're going to think anything is sluggish just about. So just one of those things that goes back to what I say a lot. You need to drive these vehicles for yourself and experience them for yourself because the test drive is just something where I can't really relay to you what it's going to be like for you when you drive it yourself. But overall, very enjoyable, easy to see out of. I would, if I had thought about it earlier, I would definitely drop the middle headrest on that third row back there just to make it a little bit easier to see. But really, a lot of good things going on here, I must say. For our first time out in a Pathfinder, pretty impressed. Okay, tell me what you think about our first visit to Or Nissan. Is the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder SV a better mid-size three-row SUV option? Tell me what your thoughts are and what you use to determine your criteria on that. Maybe we can do a better job of showing you some of that information if we're not already doing it. I do want to say a special thanks to our friends here at Or Nissan in Shreveport, Louisiana for loaning us this Pathfinder for the day. Don't forget about that link down in the description of the video if this is something you want to buy or maybe there's something else at the dealership you're interested in. That will also get you there. I want to say a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to take the time to watch and give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please be sure to do so. That way you don't miss any of our future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out that video that's on the screen right now and we'll see you there.